Mental health is not a destination, but a process. It's about how you drive, not where you're going. Hi, welcome to Life is a Treasure podcast. I'm your hostess, Michelle Durand, and this is episode number 31, Mental Health Awareness. Be kind to your mind. The week of May 18th through May 24th, 2020 is Mental Health Awareness Week. The purpose of having a designated week or month is to bring awareness to a subject or a topic. And so being it's Mental Health Awareness Week, I thought it would be so appropriate to create an episode solely about mental health. Mental health is... I, mental health means something different to everyone I've come to believe. I also strongly believe that mental health, mental disorder, mental illness has been such a stigma in our society that has caused so much shame. I know from being a post-abortive woman that when we hold secrets that are shameful to us, it's usually because society is judging. It is seen as a stigma or something we do not talk about because we will be judged, ridiculed, and brought more shame. And I don't like the word shame. I feel like it's a dirty, ugly word. And I really wish that we could get rid of that word out of our vocabulary. Shame serves no purpose. So I want to just kind of talk about mental is our brain. And Life is a Treasure podcast is about, is about mind, body, soul. Our mental, our physical, and our spiritual parts of our bodies. And so... When we talk about mental awareness, mental health, mental awareness, we are strictly talking about our brain. And that's where our thoughts come. Our thoughts create our words. Our words create our feelings. And then our feelings and our emotions create how we make decisions, how we react to things. And feelings are our response. They're the interpretation of the emotions. And we get to choose and decide how we want to feel. We have a choice. But I want to come back to mental disorders. I, disclaimer, I'm not a doctor, psychologist, psychiatrist, none of that. I have, I'm mainly speaking from my experiences, my knowledge from researching and what I have been through in my own life and experienced personally regarding my mental health. And mental disorders are just things that, you know, like I had a guest one time on my show and she says, what normal is a button on the washing machine or the dryer? And that's so true because it's all relative. It's all from someone's perspective and someone's perspective is based on how they were raised and what they believe. So who is to say what is normal, you know? So there are what would be considered by, I guess, doctors, disorders. So they could be anxiety, depression, bipolar, eating, like overeater, overeating or undereating, obsessive compulsive disorder, panic attacks, PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, paranoia, stress. And so I'm going to come back to when I was a very young girl, um, I had these habits that I could not um, explain or understand. Of course, I was very young, like six, seven years old when they started. And I grew up and I was teased in middle school through high school. Finally, when I became an adult, I really was curious. I wanted to know what was making my body have these involuntary movements, which are called ticks, T-I-C-S. 
And I went to a psychiatrist who was a doctor of the brain, and he explained to me that I had Tourette syndrome, and it's a disorder. So, of course, I felt like something's wrong with me, you know. So that's where this disorder thing comes from. That's where the shame comes from. Like, oh, I'm not like everyone else. I'm different. I'm abnormal. I'm broken. I'm a weak. I'm a failure. That's all stories I could have told myself. I received the information. I did my research. I found out the facts, and I learned about Tourette syndrome. I learned how to deal with it. I learned how to cope with it. I took medicine for it.、Um, I've always had to learn how to manage my Tourette syndrome, and so that was my first beginning experience with. My brain disorders, and for the Tourette's, it affects your whole body, and it can affect your soul. Because I would pray and ask God to heal me from my Tourette's, yet I felt like it was a thorn in my flesh, and it was something a burden I had to carry. But I also come to realize that I'm now in my fifties, and it's like that is this is who I am. This is how I was created. I can fight it, or I can accept it. And so, whatever you're dealing with, we all have a disorder. We all have seasons of our life. You know, I went through a divorce, and I was very depressed. I was at the verge of feeling I felt suicidal. I just wanted to end the pain, and I didn't know how to make it stop. I also felt that after I had my abortion, I didn't want to live with the guilt and the shame. I've had eating disorders. I struggle with obsessive compulsive disorder, and in my research of Tourette syndrome, those things are all hand in hand. Tourette syndrome also brings anxiety. It can bring panic attacks. It causes you to be stressed more easily than other people.、Um, obsessive compulsive disorder (OCD). Your mind thinks you have to keep doing something over and over. That's part of it too. And there's seasons of my life where I've been through that. You know, it waxes and wanes, which means it comes and it goes, and you learn to go with the flow. And I just want to say, if you have a child who has Tourette's, the worst thing you can do is tell them to stop because they cannot control their movements or their vocal tics. And if you'd like a whole episode on Tourette's, let me know, and I would be more than happy to share my experience, my journey with Tourette syndrome, and my research that I have learned from. Years and years of study, and over thirty years dealing with like my whole life, I've dealt with it. But I learned out that I had Tourette's in my twenties, and I'm in my fifties, so thirty years of this PTSD.、Um, I definitely experienced it, and I see it in almost every client who comes to me for help after their abortion. They struggle with areas that. Or triggers and that remind them of their abortion experience, and that is part of post-traumatic stress disorder. As we go through this worldwide pandemic of COVID nineteen, I see mental health coming up to the top of the priority list for self care. People are struggling more than ever, and I find that this topic is very relevant to the times that we're living in right now in 2020. You know, life is not the way it was. We are having to listen to the news, which can cause us more stress, more anxiety. So, I'm going to list some tips in a little while, give you some examples, but keep that in mind that. Our mental health is heightened, enlightened by what's happening right now. It's a great time to really take inventory and see how is your mental health. And I'm going to offer you some tips in a few minutes. One thing that I want to stress throughout this episode is the importance of boundaries, self boundaries. I'm going to be doing an entire episode on that in the future. But that's important to remember that boundaries is extremely important for your mental health. So, 
what can we do day to day as we deal and we want to help our health of our mind? Take pauses. Just pause. Go outside. Breathe in, out, inhale, exhale. Hold your breath and then release. Just feel, allow yourself to feel whatever your body is signaling you to feel. Take breaks often. Make sure that you get a lot of sleep right now, not only to help your mental health, but to boost your immune system. And don't feel like you're alone. Even though you might really be alone in reality, there's the internet. You're listening to me right now through the internet. And you are not alone. I struggle and I have struggled through every one of those disorders. I have felt the shame and the stigma from society. And I know how much that hurts. But I want you to know that I see you. And I feel you and I know how painful things can be in our life. And I'm here to offer you some encouragement, information, inspiration, and an invitation invitation to join me in a free Facebook group, Tears to Treasures, if you are struggling from a past abortion. I also have a group called Life is a Treasure podcast, and that is a public group for anyone who has listened to this podcast who wants to bring the conversation there. I encourage you to find it and join there and reach out to me. I want to meet you. I want to be there for you. I want to support you. I want us to grow this community to let others know that they are not alone in their suffering, in their secrets. Whether you feel shame, there is no shame. There is no judgment. We are all human beings. We all make mistakes. We all go through things that we might be ten intent. We might feel the shame, but you should never feel like you should be ashamed of anything. So during this time of mental health, I want to offer you some tips to increase the health of your mindsets. Look after your physical health. So again, sleep, make sure you're getting enough water, movement, nature, go outside participate in yoga. I have an episode with my daughter, Courtney Sprawls, Mind Body Mystic, and she talks about yoga. She was trained in Bali and she offers online yoga classes. So if you find that episode with Courtney Sprawls, I'll have it in the show notes, but she offers online yoga. It's great because the gyms are closed. Most yoga studios are closed right now, but you can join from the comfort of your own home. And she is an amazing instructor. So um, find what works for you and just take care of your body, your physical health. Manage your stress. It's so important right now to focus on positive things rather than the negativity around you. Stress, um, a lot of times just going outside in nature will calm you back down. Will take off your shoes, walk through the grass, just feel grounded. For me, I like to go in my garden and just plant or dig up things and just be in the dirt. I love that. And I just feel so grounded when I do that. So find what works for you. Whether And I take a hot bath at night with some Epsom salt. I drink chamomile tea and lavender tea with honey. So whatever you can find that is stress relieving to you, do that. Also, think about how you can help others. Reaching out to other people. Volunteering. If you have more time, I volunteered at pregnancy help centers where I lived before. And I love helping other people. And when you help other people, it helps you too. You feel better about yourself. So get out in your community or get online and help others. Have good people around you. It's so important. Again, that comes with the boundaries. You have to have your own self-protection, your own boundaries. 
you know, we have sometimes a fence or a gate around our yard. That's to protect our property. Our ba- That is a boundary. So you have a right to have that boundary around you. To only allow positive influences in your life. You have that choice. You choose if you want to have more positive or more negativity in your life. So choose positivity and just try to limit the negative toxicity in your life. Practice calmness. I think of yoga, meditation. I just, when I think of calmness, I just think of nature. So find calmness in your day. You know, when my kids were young, I would just go sit in my car and just listen to music or ride around the neighborhood and they were with their dad. So find things that will bring you calmness. Use essential oils, diffuse oils. My favorites are lavender and um, I love sage. And so just bring calmness into your life. Don't overwhelm yourself. If you're just watching the news, news, news. Don't overwhelm yourself with all of the news. <laughs> it can be so overwhelming. And I hear that like from most people right now, they are so overwhelmed with what's happening in the world. So try to just not allow yourself because overwhelm is also a choice. And you can stop doing some things that are not bringing you productivity and you can just decrease your activities to not be so overwhelmed. Avoid intoxication. I know right now it might be tempting to overdrink, overeat, or to just numb the feelings. Because <laughs> when we're in this time where it's quieter and we can't just stay busy all the time, it's easy to overindulge, over intoxicate. So just be mindful of that. It's a great opportunity to try new things. I'm going to be learning how to paint, and I am a growing things in my garden that I've never grown before and I'm raising butterflies and so I'm just finding new things I I try new recipes so always look for the opportunities in the obstacles and most importantly ask for help when you need it don't be ashamed don't feel like you're burdening anyone we all need help I have a therapist. I have always had someone, a mentor, coach, counselor, whatever you want to call that person that you can go to express yourself, share your deepest feelings, and be guided, not told what to do, but guided to your own intuition of what is best for you. That is, to me, what therapy is about It's not someone telling you what to do. It's not someone who's involved emotionally in your life. It's an outside person who can help you, can be a mirror to you, who can reflect back to you what you're feeling, what you're saying, what you're thinking to help guide you into your soul's path. And if you would like me to do that with you, I have appointments online on my scheduler on my website lifeisatreasure.com and also through my Facebook page and through the month of May I am offering a free 30 minute session mentorship if you would like a session with me to see like where you're feeling stuck or where you might be feeling um, depressed or you know, just sad and just don't understand and overwhelmed, I can help you process through your thoughts. Again, because your thoughts create your words and your words create your feelings and your feelings create your your behavior. And um, so reach out to me. I'd love to be there for you and to help you through whatever situation you might find yourself in. Another thing that's so important is to have a daily routine and ritual. You know, it may be that your schedule is not the same right now. Create a new schedule, but make sure you stay in some type of routine and ritual. It helps your mindset so much. It's such a healthy thing for your mental state. The theme for Mental Health Awareness Week this year, 2020, is kindness. And I just love this affirmation or this quote, Be kind to your mind. Give yourself compassion. 
Give yourself grace. Give yourself forgiveness. Whatever you need, you can give that to yourself. Your mind can be treated with kindness. And when you do, you start to like yourself and then you like yourself more and more and that turns into self-love. And I'm going to be creating an episode on self-love next month along with boundaries. But for today, I mainly wanted to stay focused on mental health awareness, the power of positivity. That is going to be the, the topic of next week's episode. I have a guest, her name is Nikki Johnson, and her podcast is called Power of Positive, but let me make sure, Posit- Power of Positive, yes, that's her podcast, and she is an infertility survivor, so she is sharing her journey of her infertility, the struggles, the sadness, the sorrow, but then it turns into a beautiful testimony and beautiful treasures. So I highly encourage you to listen to that episode next week. Subscribe so you don't miss out. And she's also a wellness mentor. She helps with mindset, confidence. It just ties in so beautifully with this episode that I'm recording right now. So I really want to leave you with some inspiration that Whatever you're going through, you are not alone. You're not the only person in this world that is going through this or has going through this. As you can see from my stories, I've struggled and I share about so many different mental health, illness, disorder, whatever you want to call it. But that's not who I am. That is like what I've been through. That's how I felt. But that does not determine my worth or who I am. I am not a failure, and you are not a failure. You are not broken. You, Your heart may be broken. Your mind may be broken, but that can be healed. You can learn how to take better health, care of your mental health. You can. We all can. It's a choice. But your mindset controls how you live your life. And so I hope that through this episode of Mental Health Health Awareness, you can see how important it is and how much control you actually have over your mental health. And you can create a life that you treasure. It may take hard work. It may take inner work. It may take reaching out and getting support. And there is no shame in that. Whatever is blocking you, allow yourself to release that. Let that go and find new beliefs, new stories for a new life that you can create in order to treasure it. I hope that this episode has encouraged you, has helped you in some way. And if so, please let me know. I'd love to hear from you. I will have, uh, as always, my link to my website and my Facebook groups in this podcast And I hope that you will reach out to me and I hope that you will try at least one or two of the tips that I suggested. You know, it all starts with baby steps, but you have to start somewhere. We all have to start somewhere. So until next week, I hope you all have a great week and I will talk to you later. Peace, love, and joy.